Hi, I'm James from Tokyo Wheel, and today I'm going to give you a tour of our carbon wheel factory. We're going to look at the process that we use to manufacture your wheels. We're very proud of our manufacturing and happy to give you an inside look at that process today. Before we get started, I want you to take a look at the final product. Here is a carbon bicycle wheel. This happens to be the Tokyo Wheel Epic 88 carbon clincher front wheel. It's made up of three main parts. The hub, the spokes, and the 100% carbon rim. All Tokyo wheels are made from a full carbon rim for a few reasons, mainly aerodynamic performance and acceleration due to the light weight. It takes about one month per rim to be manufactured in a multi-step process. Today, we're going to walk through that process, beginning with the raw materials. Here we have a roll of the raw material for your carbon wheels. This is carbon prepreg, which is short for pre-impregnated carbon. What that means is that this is woven carbon fiber fabric encased in a polymer resin. It's not fully cured and hardened, it's still flexible, so this allows us to cut it into the necessary shapes for the different structures of the rims. So what we do is we use an industrial shear and die cutting machines and we cut this roll into more manageable pieces and then we cut these pieces into the necessary strips and shapes for the different models of the rim depending upon uh, which rim it exactly is. We take over 20 separate pieces of prepreg of varying tensile strengths and densities and resins, and we combine them into a prepreg kit. So this is all the carbon that goes into one rim. You can see why the rims are so high performance because actually the material is very thin and light. But after curing, uh, this will become the rigid form that is your carbon rim. Next, let's go see um, in the layup workshop how this preprint kit becomes more the shape of your rim. Now we are in the layup workshop. This is where we take the preprint kit from the previous step and uh, it begins to take the shape of a rim. The way that we do that is we take all the pieces of the kit and we form them around a foam core. This is also the step where we insert a pneumatic bladder uh, inside of the rim. We use that later during the molding process to apply an outward pressure on the rim to help uh, it to uh, create a rigid shape. So here you can see what we have here is the foam core and then the pneumatic bladder, the sheets of carbon prepreg all inside of a jig. Next we're going to take this over to the molding room and we're going to cure it uh, and let's go check that out now. Now we are in the molding room. Here's where we take the layup and we mold it into the final shape of the rim. Here you can see one of our rim molds. We use a multi-piece mold, which is one piece for each side of the rim, and then a, a third series of molds around the outside to form the clincher bead hook. This is one of the reasons why our clincher rims perform so well. You can see here where we will apply a pneumatic pressure from the inside of the rim, pressing it against the mold during the curing process. After we place the layup into the mold and we put all the pieces of the mold together, we will slide it into the curing machines here. This is where we apply that pneumatic pressure from the inside, a vacuum from the outside, and a controlled heating and cooling process to cure the rim. The background noise that you hear is our backup power generator. Because this is such a critical part of the process, we use a backup generator to condition the power going to these machines. 
so that none of our rim's performance is adversely affected if the power from the power grid fluctuates. From here, we'll take the rims out and clean off any excess resin that they might have on them, and we'll show you that in the next step. Now we are in the cleaning and preliminary quality control workshop. Here, we will clean off any excess resin left over from the molding process, as well as complete our first three quality control checks. We test for roundness here on this table with a micrometer, and also with a micrometer, we're gonna test the consistency of the width of the breaking surface. What this lets us know is how smooth uh, and, and nice the breaking will be on that rim. Finally, we check the weight of the rim, and if a specific rim passes all three of these quality control tests, then we'll move on to spoke hole drilling. This is our CNC spoke hole drilling machine. We use this to accurately drill the spoke holes in the rim. We can vary the number of spoke holes and the angle of the spoke holes for each specific model of wheel that we're drilling. What that allows us to do is drill the spoke hole angles specifically to align well with the spokes. That, that more perfect intersection between the spoke hole and the spoke allows us to increase the strength of the rim, increase the rider weight limit of the rim, and increase the overall performance of the wheel as a whole. Once we're done with this, we take this rim over for more testing in our digital testing lab. Now we are in the digital testing lab. This is a critical part of the manufacturing process and one of the reasons why our wheels perform so well. Here, we measure braking performance. We spin a wheel up to 30 kilometers an hour and we measure seven different key performance indicators. The most important of those are deceleration, uh, stopping distance, average rim temperature, and maximum rim temperature. By analyzing this, we're able to ensure the performance of our wheels and the durability under heavy braking conditions. The material that we use to achieve this is a DuraHeat R carbon that we use on the braking surface. This is a two-part material technology. Uh, the first part is a very highly temperature resistant resin. What that does is it allows the carbon to get hotter before any damage is done. So you can break heavier and heat up your rim more and it won't have uh, any durability issues. The second part of the technology is in the actual carbon fiber fabric. Um, there are thermally conductive elements uh, inside of the fabric and what those do is they spread heat away from any hot spots that might generate on the rim. Uh, to the adjacent areas of the rim. So basically, we, we take the heat from somewhere that could be a problematic area and we disperse it over the rim so that it can, it can cool more rapidly. Those two technologies together allow us to have a better stopping wheel that's more durable on long brake heavy descents. The next part of our testing process is rim stiffness and we're gonna go take a look at that now. Next, we test for rim stiffness. We do this by taking a section of a rim, threading a spoke into it, and then applying an upwards force of 3,000 newtons. When we do that, we measure the flex and deflection of the rim to the thousandth of a millimeter. This allows us to make sure that we have as stiff of a rim as possible. The way that this results in real world performance is that the stiffer a rim is, the more power can be transferred from a rider through the wheel onto the road, resulting in greater speed. Once we've tested this, then we take the rims over to our just-in-time wheel building factory. Now we are in the just-in-time wheel building factory. When a customer goes online to tokyowheel.com and places an order for their wheels, they're selecting from over 7,000 possible wheel configurations. The way that we're able to provide that amount of customization is this just-in-time wheel building factory. We keep the rims 
hubs, spokes, and graphics for every possible wheel on hand here, and we wait for a customer to place an order. Once they do, the specifications for their wheel are sent directly into this room, and their wheel is hand-built exactly how they've ordered it. We lace the rim to the hubs and the spokes here, and throughout the truing process, we bring the spokes up to tension while also stress relieving the wheel, which means that we apply sideways pressure onto the hub to simulate the break-in period of the wheel. So if you were to have your wheel made by a, a more basic process, you would need to have it retrued over the life of the wheel. But our wheel building technique makes that unnecessary. Our wheels stay truer longer over the life of the wheel. Once we have the wheel built to the customer's specification, we take it over for the final finishing. Next, we apply semi-reflective decals for safety in your choice of 12 colors. Once that's done, we box up the wheels, hand them off to the shipping company, and they begin their journey to you. Thanks for letting me give you a tour of the Tokyo Wheel Factory. Let me know if you have any questions or need anything. Thanks.